own. I was looking the other day at my Andrews diesel kerosene space heater thing the other day, and I was thinking to myself, I've got a spare wireless uh, thermostat from when I took it out to replace it with the Atmo. Could I build it onto here and turn it into an actual clever unit instead of just being the on-off switch and it runs all the time? Could I, could I wire it up and actually have the thermostat control it on and off? I think I can. This is the wireless thermostat I had left over. It is a Computer, Computherm Q3RF. That's the bit that you attach to your boiler. That's this backing plate that you wire the wires on and attach that on the back of that. That gets attached to the wall or whatever. And that's your room thermostat, which needs new batteries by the looks of it. So my thought is to have this room thermostat over where I'm working, mount this on the diesel burner, and then it can be at the other end of the workshop, turning on and off far away, well, fairly far away, and up here actually stays at a reasonable temperature, instead of the workshop getting up to 30 degrees and me going, oh my god, it's so hot in here, and then turning it off. And then give it 10 minutes and you go, Jesus, wept, it's cold in here, and I'm turned back on again. So we'll let it do the... Do the thinking, controlling. And with all of these nice um, thermometer type things, it's four wires. Uh, can you can you zoom in there? Neutral, live, and then the two switch wires for the therm thermostat. Or for your boiler, sorry, because it's just a switch, you know. Input and then output. And that's it. It's easy peasy. Just turns up on and off. Right, let's wire it in. Okay, so as I was saying, this is just a dumb unit. It's just got one single on-off switch. It just turns on-off. In here, this was the electronics lever. It does actually have electronics. Goodbye paint. Yeah, this could really do with a, a paint or some variety. Can I get a magnetise there? Yes, good to that. Give us some slack. It's also not plugged in, I should point out, it's absolutely not plugged in. Ah, oh, and someone's stolen the screws for these bo this box. Oh, that's not so bad. But, anyways, as you can see, there is a little control board, which obviously does the controls for the ignition and controlling the fan and whatnot. But, all we're really interested in is breaking into this switched feed here, so that's the main power lead coming in through the switch and on the board. So we'll be taking that one and breaking it and that'll be our switched, the switch feed, not switch feed, the switch we'll be putting on the board for the thermostat controller. And it can just switch it on and off. Once we've switched it on, then it'll need to go through the controller, which can switch it on and off. And then what we'll do is just take a supply off of this somewhere, for oh, there's, there's mains, oh that's nearly not plugged in anymore. Main supply, neutral, and then we just uh, attach them to the controller to give it power. Easy peasy. Right, what do I actually need? Uh, soldering iron, and snips, and strips. Now, in order for me to make this as complex as possible, I've used the same colour of wire for everything. So, this yellow wire is the neutral. This yellow wire is the line, or live, depending on how you feel. Uh, this yellow wire here is one half of the switch. And this yellow wire here is the other half of the switch. Ah. Why have you used all yellow wire, David? Because I'm cheap, and I was recycling it. So, all those yellow wires, come through the hole and come onto this plate. As you can see, we've got yellow neutral, yellow live, one part of the yellow switch, the other part of the yellow switch. And that's it all just about ready to go. Put the controller on, give it power, uh, turn it on, and then see if it fires up and turns on and off with the thermostat. I apologise, I did not film the soldering as it is cold in here, my hands are shaking, it wasn't pretty, but it's soldering, and there's no real point in me showing you which 
wires were which, because you might not have the same heat as this, it might not have the same things, it might not be the same controller at all, so it'd be fairly pointless. But the concept should be the same no matter what heater you're putting on. Right, let's put the bits on and give it power. So this is the actual controller head, the actual electronics. I'm just trying to make sure I don't sit in a hot stove now. Uh, One-handed unplugs don't work. Right. Piece off over there. Go and cool down. Don't burn anybody. Oh, no screwdriver. Right. All of that can get poked back inside there. Mostly. Yeah, you all poked out of there, so. Really? Sure. Okay. Oh, I've made a rookie error. Ah, oh, I don't think there's going to be enough space. When, oh, maybe there will be. Oh. Piss off. That clips over there like that. Clacks into place. Can you still get to the screws in the bottom? Yes. Let's do this one first. I don't really want to get electrocuted off the main supply, so if it's actually fairly well tucked away, that'll do. Right, there's enough space to put this back in its hole. There will be if you get them. the mains wire tucked under it. Get down there. Go on. Why is this control box not? Is there because there's a great big honking screw in the way? No, it's not. There's no problem, it is just operator error. Two screws. One here. One here. Okay, screw it in, that's it, that's ready to go. As much as I want to turn it on here, it's going to fire heat and melt everything over there, so we're going to have to move it. Let's move it. Okay, we've come to slightly further down the workshop. Now let me turn on the power for the main thing. Oh, the lights lit up, that's a good start. Okay, the lights are on. No, I think, let's just, what's the controller? So, the controller thinks it's four degrees in here, four degrees. So we'll take the set temperature down now. Oh. Okay, it's lowest temperature is five. Oh, that's gonna be interesting. Okay, so if we set that there, so much moving about and turn this on. Now I seem to remember somewhere that that only sends a signal when it needs to send a signal. But I think we can press manual. Uh, I didn't hear it click. Manual. Right, okay, let's set the temperature to eight degrees. Uh, 
Uh, nothing. Okay. In my impatience, I turned the camera off as I thought it was a fault. As I put the camera down, it absolutely kicked in a leg. Ah. Uh, okay, so what I did was step away for a few seconds and it fired right up by its little self. What I want to see is, once it gets up to temperature, Hey, it got to 8.2 degrees, not off. Ha-ha! It works! We got up to 8.3 and it turned itself off. That's fantastic, that's what I wanted. Now I can put it all the way down the bottom of the workshop and it can blow hot air up here and it actually stays a decent temperature up here. That's excellent! I can't, well, actually, I can't believe it worked because it's a fairly simple system. And then all you have to do is wait for that to think it's cooled down again. Obviously I wouldn't be setting it directly in the line of the blast because that's pretty stupid. But I could sit it over here on the workbench where I'm actually working. Yeah, that's a good thing. And it'll just turn on and off as it goes. As it heats up and heats, cools down. Or you could even, I could even set it to like five degrees and have it make sure the workshop doesn't freeze at night. That's a possibility. Anyway, thanks for watching. And maybe now I should tidy up some of this stuff.